Headaches and Diving by Dr. Franz Cronier, read by the author. Headaches are one of the most common complaints in general medical practice, so it's not surprising that they're also common in diving. Apart from the discomfort related to them, they are concerned that they may be the result of a more deep-seated or ominous problem. The management of diving-related headaches is undertaken on three levels. Firstly, we want to understand what causes them, with the objective of preventing them. Secondly, we want to know when a headache is serious with the purpose of seeking medical assessment when necessary. And thirdly, we'd like to know what causes minor diving-related headaches so that they may be prevented or, if necessary, treated. Surprisingly, the center of our consciousness and all sensory input, the brain, is itself not particularly pain sensitive. There are only a limited number of areas within the brain, skull and scalp that actually transmit pain impulses. This is helpful when trying to understand or unravel the causes of a headache. To make it simple, pain around the head can be divided into four so-called zones. The first zone relates to the blood vessels of the meninges or the membranes surrounding the brain. These blood vessels transmit pain impulses when they become dilated or irritated, so the pain is usually throbbing in nature and may be associated with vomiting. If the meninges are actually irritated as well, neck stiffness may be present. Zone 2 includes the scalp from the nape of the neck to the top of the head. This area is supplied by the uppermost nerves from the spinal cord and it may be irritated as a result of persistent muscle contraction of the neck and the associated scalp muscles. Irritation of this area usually results in deep band-like or constricting pain with a possibility of scalp tenderness. Zone 3 The scalp and facial structures of the face, forehead and teeth are included in this area. They are all supplied by the trigeminal nerve or the fifth cranial nerve, which is particularly sensitive to pain. The pain is usually stinging, burning, sharp or stabbing in quality, a bit like toothache. This area also contains the jaw muscles and the jaw hinge joint, called the temporomandibular or TMJ joint. Zone 4 includes the sinus and middle ear cavities. These structures are sensitive to pressure and inflammation. The pain is usually experienced as a sort of painful fullness or burning, which is referred to the skin closest to the affected area. The pain is often made worse by lowering the head. The purpose of this section is not to explore the everyday headaches, although they do follow the same basic principles that were described previously, but the purpose here is to list those that are specifically associated with diving. So if you suffer from regular or severe headaches, we recommend that you have these assessed by a health professional. Let's review the most common causes of diving-related headaches, and they are listed according to the zones in which they are experienced. Zone 1, which relates to the blood vessels and the membrane surrounding the brain, are sensitive to cold water, but like an ice cream headache. Caffeine, alcohol and other drugs that affect the blood vessels. Gas toxicity, especially high carbon dioxide. And decompression illness, usually in combination with other problems such as weakness or numbness. Zone 2, which includes the scalp from the nape of the neck to the top of the head, is particularly sensitive to situations where the neck is hyperextended, such as trying to move or curve the head around a pillar valve that is set too high in a buoyancy compensator. Anxiety or tension may also irritate this area. Thirdly, there's the scalp and facial structures related to the face, forehead and teeth. This area is vulnerable to pain associated with acute barotrauma of the teeth, sinuses and ears, and irritation of the temporomandibular joint, particularly acute pain. Zone 4 relates to the sinus and middle ear cavities, which are vulnerable to infection, mask tension or chronic TMJ pain. 
So how do we decide whether a headache is serious? Headaches that are mild and have a gradual onset over the course of a day are rarely serious. Most of us suffer from these from time to time. However, the following features would suggest the possibility of an underlying problem and should receive prompt medical attention. Sudden, severe onset. Possibly described like the worst headache I've ever had or thunderclap headache. Any headache associated with altered consciousness or sleepiness. Any headache associated with nausea and vomiting unless previously appropriately investigated and clearly attributed to migraine, for instance. Any headache associated with neck stiffness, fever, visual or other neurological disturbances. Any headache following an event or incident while diving, such as following a rapid ascent, omitted decompression and so on. Morning headaches, unless clearly related to alcohol toxicity or withdrawal. What remedies are available for common, minor, diving-related headaches? Well, first of all, suppressing headaches with analgesics may provide subjective relief, but the drugs themselves may affect alertness and exacerbate nitrogen narcosis, so they're not recommended with diving. In truth, most diving physicians would not be particularly concerned with divers taking paracetamol or low-dose ibuprofen but narcotic or sedating drugs should definitely be avoided. Better than any treatment, though, is prevention. And there are several quick-fix solutions that may be useful in preventing diving-related headaches, and they're a good place to start and are good diving practice anyway. They include ensuring adequate hydration. Dehydration is a very common cause of headache, and ensuring adequate hydration by drinking two glasses of preferably isotonic fluids or lacking that just fresh and safe water often will abate a headache within about 30 minutes. Loosening the mask strap to avoid pressure on the nose, forehead and cheekbones is another quick fix remedy. If necessary, consider changing to a more comfortable mask. When you exhale through the mask, it should be easy and also, by exerting gentle pressure on the mask, there should be no specific pain over the nose bridge or eyebrow areas. Relax the neck during dives. Even though it may possibly spoil your trim momentarily, rotating the whole body rather than just the neck to look at objects underwater may avoid unnecessary strain and discomfort related to hyperextending the neck. Also, just ensure that the pillar valve is not set too high in the BC. Otherwise, one tends to stretch one's neck around the pillar valve to avoid banging the back of the head on it. Relax during dives. Take slow, deep breaths, not only because it's relaxing, but because it's a more efficient way of removing carbon dioxide. Don't suppress the need to breathe by breathing less. Rather, if you want to reduce air consumption, relax and reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that is produced. Stay in shape. Exercise reduces the incidence of headaches. And of course avoid caffeine and tobacco with diving. Always follow safe diving practices. Spend three to five minutes at a safety stop at three to five meters below the surface because it's relaxing and allows time not only for decompression but also to eliminate the carbon dioxide buildup from finning to the surface. Weather and diving conditions, of course, should always be considered as well. Wear adequate thermal protection and consider wearing a hoodie if the water is cold. And then go for regular medical examinations, preferably by a diving physician. It's recommended to be done biennially, below the age of 40, and annually thereafter. Headaches can really spoil a diving trip or vacation and detract from the wonderful underwater experience of our unique sport. Many headaches are simple to cure once the cause has been determined. The above-mentioned suggestions should allow most divers to steer away from headaches. But remember that unless a headache is easily explained, it is always better to go for a checkup. If they are recurrent, seek medical advice. In summary, headaches are common. We want to understand them for three reasons. Firstly, to know what causes them to prevent them. Secondly, when they are serious, 
so that we seek medical advice, and thirdly, how to avoid diving-related headaches. There are three zones that are affected primarily as a result of headaches associated with diving. Zone 1 includes the blood vessels of the membranes surrounding the brain. Zone 2, the neck area from the nape of the neck to the top of the head. Zone 3, the scalp and facial structures. And Zone 4, the sinus and middle ear cavities. Most common causes in Zone 1, cold water, caffeine alcohol, CO2 and DCI. Zone 2, hyperextension of the neck, anxiety and tension. Zone 3, tooth sinus or ear barrow trauma and temporomandibular joint pain. Zone 4, sinus and ear infections, mast tension and chronic TMJ pain. Serious headaches are often sudden and severe, associated with altered consciousness or sleepiness, associated with nausea and vomiting or neck stiffness, and may be the result of a violation of diving tables. Morning headaches, unless related to alcohol withdrawal, are also in need of further examination. To address minor headaches, assess mask fit, avoid neck strain, relax, take deep breaths, stay in shape, avoid caffeine and tobacco, and follow safe diving practices. Wear adequate thermal protection and go for regular diving medical checkups. You've been listening to Headaches and Diving by Dr. Franz Cronier.